Hi, I'm Marcus with IndieMusicLab.com. So today, I just want to dive into why we use buses, how to use buses inside of Studio One. Okay, so first off, what exactly is a bus channel? Well, glad you asked because let me open up my, my mix window in Studio One. So I have all of these tracks right here. These are all bus channels right here. All of these that are color coded white. These are all bus channels. Now the way that a bus channel works is just think of it as a bus stop. So you have a track and then you have multiple tracks and then you have a main output, right? What a bus does is instead of sending that track directly to the main output, it first sends it through a bus then to the main output. And this helps you in so many ways. It saves your time, it speeds up your workflow, it organizes your session so you're not, your head isn't as chaotic when you're working on your mix so you feel a little bit more organized. And one of the best things about bus channels is it takes less work and it sounds better. There is no better win-win than that. It's like work less and have it sound better. That's what it's all about. So that's what bus channels are for, and that's why we use them. So now let's get into the how, the technicalities of how this exactly works. Now to illustrate this, I just pulled in a bunch of stems. These are all the mix stems from one of the songs that I've released in the past. And then over here, we've got the folders that double as buses because these are assigned to the buses that we just looked at over here. So these are the buses. So this is generally what my bus channels look like. Something like drums, bass, guitars, synths, keys, effects, lead vocals, background vocals. Obviously, some songs will have more, some songs will have less, but it's the concept that matters here and it's the organization that matters here. It really helps my brain to not feel so scattered when I use buses, especially during the mixing phase. When I'm producing and I'm experimenting, I don't use buses as much. I still use them, but it's not as crucial. But when it comes to the mixing phase where you're doing all the effects and the compression and all these different things, it's really helpful to have buses to send your tracks through. And I'll explain why here in a second. So first off, let's go grab a couple of the drum tracks on this song. So, okay, the tempo. <laughs> the tempo was wrong. This was, I think, 84. Let me make that right. Okay, so there's a drum loop, so I'm gonna drag this into the drums folder. So that is now being sent to the drum bus. As you can see right here, this says drums. These over here, main. So these are being sent to the main output. What's happening with this track, this drum loop, is it's being sent to the drum bus. The drum bus is then being sent to the main output. Now let's go find another drum track that needs to be on here. Okay, so here we've got a drum loop slap uh, this is like the same track, except it has a bunch of slap delay on it. Except maybe it's over here. Yeah, there we go. And then we've got just a few other random drum tracks, so I'm just going to throw those in there real quick. And uh, now, do you see how much this organizes everything, right? So now we can color code these so they're all the same. So it looks really pretty, right? So now those are all blue. Now, this song has a bunch of like keys and synths and strings and different things like that. So let's go ahead and add those to the keys bus. We've got like a bell and a choir, we'll add those as well. By the way, if you don't use folders in Studio One, you're missing out because as you can see here, when, it, when I drag one of these tracks into these folders that are directly assigned to the buses, it automatically routes those tracks to that bus. So, and in order to do that in Studio One, all you do is right click and uh, pack folder. So if you select any of these, or even if you don't, you can just make a folder and go pack folder, and then you have a folder. And then if you've already got a bus set up, or you can actually add a bus. So if, if I wanted to add another uh, bus channel here, let's just say leads, then we add a bus channel. Now we've added another bus channel down here. Uh, let's see where it put it. So right here it is. So that is an incredible intuitive way to organize in Studio One. It's, it truly is amazing and I love the workflow. Okay, now another thing that's really cool about using buses is not only can you send it from, let's say a kick to the drum bus to the main output. Also, if you have multiple kicks, you can send those kicks to the, a kick bus 
then to the drum bus, then to the main output. You can keep that going. You can make that chain as long as you want. So here's an example for this song. So we've got four different hum tracks right here that are playing this part. So instead of grabbing these and having these all be sent to the background vocals bus, I could first select these and add bus for select to channels to create a new bus that is the hum bus. So now let me color code this white so I know that it's a bus channel. So now these hums are being sent to the hum bus, which is then being sent to the background vocals bus right here, which is then being sent to the main output. So now I can process these hums on one channel. I don't have to add an EQ to each one of these hums because they're copies of the exact same performance. They're just different takes. And so instead of putting EQ and reverb and all these things on this on every individual track, now I can process it on one channel. That will save you not only CPU, but It'll, it'll actually sound better, it'll sound more musical. And I don't really know how to explain why it sounds more musical, it just does, it just works. It's more of a minimal approach, right, where you start on the buses. And that is actually where I want to end this, is you want to put plugins on the buses first, then on the individual tracks as needed. So let me show you what that looks like. So again, so let's use these hums as an example. Now we also have other background vocals somewhere around here that uh, would also work to go to the background. So let's grab these two doubles and send those as well. Now, because these are all backgrounds, you want them processed usually pretty similarly. So you wanna start, instead of going to the individual tracks here, or even uh, this bus, I'm gonna start on the background vocals bus here. So instead of making all the individual tracks sound really good in of themselves, the problem with that is that's not what it's, a, that's not what mixing is about. Mixing is about gluing everything together so all the tracks sound good in relation to each other in the context of the whole song. So I highly recommend you use this approach which is often called top-down mixing. What top-down mixing is, is you just start at the very top. So you'll start with putting plugins on the master channel. So you might have a little bit of EQ or compression that you might put on there or even like a virtual tape machine. Then you wanna work on the buses. So the drum bus, the bass bus, the keys bus, the vocals bus, etc. And you wanna get those sounding as good as possible in those groups. Only then do you want to go to the individual tracks and make the necessary adjustments? Because here's the thing, if you process the groups, the buses first, often you won't have to do very much at all on the individual tracks, which is just a huge time saver. And like I said earlier, it sounds better. It's less work and it sounds better. That's a win-win. I mean, you just can't ask for anything better than that when it comes to mixing. So that is how you use buses in Studio One. That's why I use buses. It speeds up my workflow. It keeps things organized and it just makes sense. It just makes sense, it really does. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. Now, if you wanna learn more about music production and what it takes to start a song and to finish a song and what that process looks like, I've got a gift for you just for watching this video. So it's called a five-step guide for producing wow factor indie music. It's the first thing you'll see in the description below. So if you wanna learn more about production and my process, be sure to check that out in the description. Have an amazing day, see ya.